This video is on radiometric dating. It's part of the geologic history and geologic time playlist. And this video will look at what it is, the defining part of this discipline, and how scientists use the measurement of radioactive decay of an atom or an element within the rock to estimate its age and to kind of decode and figure out what has happened in our Earth's past based on rock formations, position, location, and depth. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So in order to achieve radiometric dating, which is the measurement of relativity in an element or the activity of radioactive substances in the Earth's crust, we have to look at radioactive decay and how atoms naturally break down over time. Now, the atom, we'll get into more of this later on, but the atom's going to break down and release energy and parts of the atom are gonna to change to form a different element over time. Now, this change is consistent based on the element and what's breaking down and the isotope. And what we're looking for in terms of scientists for dating the material is the half-life, the time it takes the certain element or atom to create a 50-50 ratio between the original isotope, original atoms, and the amount of daughter isotopes that have broken down and been created to a 50-50% or 50-50 ratio. Now, this is to find the absolute age of a material like the Earth itself, the planet, and that means that we're looking at an exact number of years, could be thousands of years up to billions of years. A quick recap on atomic physics, atomic chemistry. The atom was discovered in 1800 by Dalton and published in 1803 and also was discussed I guess as a topic in ancient Greece by certain philosophers. But the main discoveries of the atom using specialized microscopes and light to look at that detail, that small nth detail, came around the 19th century. And then you got back around Curie in 1896, looking at the decay of atoms and looking at the discovery of uh, electrons in 1897. Then 1902, Rutherford and Sally looking at the rate and speed of that decay based on Curie's discovery. And then 1911, Rutherford looking at the nucleus in more detail. And 1905, Lord Kelvin looking at estimating the age of the earth based on how long it would take a liquid earth to cool down and using some atomic decay rates as a basis he estimated that the earth would be 25 million years old now that was a decent estimate based on what he had to use but now with more advanced scientific experiments and knowledge of certain isotopes that decay on a long time, we can get a far greater degree of accuracy on the age of the Earth around 4.5 billion years old. So in terms of the chemistry and physics, looking at the atom and the subatomic particles, which is going to be the proton, neutron, electron, protons positive, neutrons no, no charge, electron is negatively charged. Now in the nucleus, it's going to be the proton neutron based on the elements. Now hydrogen just has the proton, but large elements have both proton and neutrons. Now if there's a certain amount of neutrons more than, than the protons, then we call this an isotope. So the isotope has is an element that has more neutrons in the nucleus and it's going to change the atomic mass. The atomic number is the amount of protons and the amount of protons equals the amount of electrons based on the shells. Now, all atoms have isotopes. Now, they can be either stable or unstable. Now, we're looking at the unstable variations of these atoms because those are the ones that are going to decay. The stable atoms or elements that have the correct amount of neutrons for the nucleus, they're not too big, they are going to not break down over time, thus being the term stable. So the isotopes are different amounts of neutrons. Now, the parent isotope is what you start with. At the beginning, once the mineral or atoms are formed in a rock, through a rock cycle, which is cooling and crystallization from the magma to the initial igneous rock. Parent isotope is what you start with, the certain element, and then the 
gradual breakdown and decay of that unstable isotope, be it carbon, uranium, is going to create a particle to be released from that nucleus. And that will be called the daughter isotope. Now, the daughter isotope comes from the parent isotope. So to figure out how old this is, we can look at the half-life and add up the amount of parent isotopes and daughter isotopes in that rock at that particular moment and work backwards from there to estimate the age. Now, as mentioned before, all atoms have isotopes. Now, some are unstable, some are stable. We're looking at the ones that are unstable to look at the rate of decay and how fast the decay is happening within the nucleus over time and the point in which the amount of decay equals a 50-50 ratio, so half parent and half daughter isotopes present in that nucleus, that is called the half-life, or T-half. And scientists can use this as a starting point to work backwards to estimate the age. And we find these unstable isotopes within elements, within rocks, in certain amounts. Some are very common. Some are very, very rare and only occur with, the with certain atoms and certain elements in a very small percentage. So sometimes scientists will only use certain isotopes or unstable atoms and nucleus nuclei because we can find them. Other ones we can't find, they're too rare in nature. So the time it takes for half of the nucleus to fill up with daughter isotopes and parent isotopes, that is the half-life, and that is how we start to work on calculating the absolute age of the material we're looking at. And what you might see in textbooks and research and journals is the rate of decay in the half-life illustrated as a graph on one axis, the parent isotope percentage, and the other axis will be time. So you can see when the certain material achieves half-life and the percent of parent isotopes which are remaining and we can see that the rate of decay is actually exponential so it gets faster as more and more daughter isotopes are, are created through decay of the nucleus or nuclei so this table is looking at the common parent isotopes or elements that are used in radiometric dating which are common and can be used as a basis to estimate absolute age of the substance. So the most common is carbon and the isotope used for this is carbon-14. And it's going to slowly decay into nitrogen-14. And the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. So this is an accurate way of calculating the absolute age of organic matter or and a substance that isn't very old in terms of the age of the Earth, in terms of 100 years to 70,000. So a relatively young or not very old substance can be very easily used with carbon-14. Then we get the different levels of looking at rocks and rock types, whether it be igneous, metamorphic, or sometimes maybe sedimentary. Now, if you're looking at a very, you think it's a very old rock, you might go with perhaps a thorium or uranium or samarium. Potassium is also used and these are going to break down and decay into different elements, daughter elements. Uranium breaks down into lead, 206, 207. Based on the type of uranium, uranium-238 is extremely long half-life of 4.5 billion years roughly and uranium-235 is a lot quicker of 707 million years. Then you have thorium that's extremely long, same with rubidium and of course samarium. These are in the tens of hundreds of billions of years for a half-life. So to find these and to find, obviously you wouldn't find them with half-life yet because the Earth isn't that old yet, but you can still calculate various ages of rocks based on a less than half-life decay. Potassium goes into argon and calcium, 40 and 40, and it's about 1.25 billion years. So anything that is old, you're going to use a uranium, thorium, rubidium. Anything more younger, you could probably use potassium or especially carbon-14. 
Since 1905, Lord Kelvin suggested that the Earth was 25 million years old, and since then, scientists and studies and investigations into radiometric dating have become more advanced, and we use different elements and atoms to get a more accurate absolute age. One of those is zircon, zircon crystal. Now, it is a neosilicate mineral. The formula is ZR or ZRSIO4. So it has that nice tetrahedra of silica. And it is basically made of zirconium, which is a metal. It's a hard mineral, which is 7.5. And it forms from magma crystallization in the process to form igneous rocks. Now, in this zircon crystal, Usually, you get just a basic zircon with zirconium, but occasionally you get the uranium replacing zirconium in the structure of the crystal, and that uranium is unstable. Now, it's always unstable uranium. There's no stable part of uranium. It's just unstable. So it's going to break down. As soon as it crystallizes, the clock starts ticking. In terms of the, that uranium decay and nucleus or nuclei, it's going to break down, and you get either the... 707 million year old half-life uranium or the longer four and a half billion half-life so both are going to give you a estimate or estimated time of how old that zircon crystal is so we're using this as a much better way to find out the age of the earth so they found this lovely specimen of zircon in western australia in a section of uh, the area called Jack Hills in the 1990s and the scientists discovered various samples of zircon ranging in dates from 3.6 up to 4.4 billion years old. Now they did the experiments and they dated, now zircon forms in layers, so they were basically dating different layers under the, under the microscope basically and they found that there was an average age of this zircon crystal that was found in the, the mineral rocks in this very old craton or craton of Western Australia, which is generally very old rocks, very stable rocks, haven't been changed through tectonics or orogeny, just very stable, unchanged for billions of years. And the oldest was between 4.2 and 4.4 billion years old. So it gave it was kind of the oldest rocks they found on Earth, and it gave scientists a starting point from which the Earth started to cool down enough that these crystals, these silicon crystals with uranium, started to crystallize and form in this rock and gave a much clearer picture of our planet and how it began from the Hadean to Archean into the Cambrian explosion, but it kind of gave a better feel for how old this planet is. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth Science.